Welcome to a brief episode about the Dongfang Hour channel itself, about ourselves as co-hosts, as well as just the topic of creating content on Chinese space. If you're new to this channel, Dongfang Hour is a YouTube channel and media that provides regular analysis on the Chinese space sector. It's been 18 months and 50 consecutive China weekly news episodes since Blaine and I first created the Dongfang Hour. And that was in the context of the early days of the COVID pandemic, where both of us had quite a bit of um, spare time on our hands. And what a journey it's been. Indeed, what a journey it has been. And just to give a very brief timeline of the podcast and some of our milestones, we officially kicked off the Dongfang Hour podcast in March of 2020, and the first content was released in May of 2020. Initially, we focused on long-form interview episodes, and this was the case until about September of 2020. At that time, we released our first Dongfang Hour China Space News Roundup, and since then, as Jean has mentioned, we have released episodes 50 weeks in a row. So thank you for all of you who have uh, been keeping up with that. And a couple of milestones related to subscribers. So we hit 100 subscribers on December 8th, 2020, 300 subscribers on April 1st, 2021. So after about 12 months of the podcast and 500 subscribers on May 27th, 2021, which was just about three months ago. And that's really when things started to get wild. We then doubled the number of subscribers a month later at 1,000 subs on June the 25th. Then we doubled again at 2,000 subs on July the 24th, so another month later. And we've just reached 3,000 subs a couple of days ago with the release of the 50th episode of the China weekly news episodes. It still remains, we know, very modest figures compared to other space news um, YouTube channels, but it's still really nice to see and encouraging to see that the channel is gaining momentum. And so that is really great. So now let's answer a few questions about uh, the podcast itself. So I guess the first main takeaway over the last 18 months is that space is getting bigger and more popular and people are starting to pay attention to the sector. It's been pretty incredible to be able to connect with viewers who are getting interested in the Chinese space sector and to get such a positive outpouring of comments and likes and subscriptions. As John mentioned, we recently hit 3000 subscribers, so thanks very much. We've had a lot of people come and say that they love our content and that they look forward to our episodes and other such positive feedback, which is always really excellent to see. And uh, it kind of reminds me of a quote from uh, Joe Rogan, perhaps the world's most famous podcaster on the topic of his podcast, where he mentions, you don't have to be number one, you just have to be something for somebody. The human connection has been pretty awesome in terms of the uh, these 18 months. So one of my main takeaways, definitely this connection with our viewers. Uh, and then a couple of the challenges. So this has included a lack of air conditioning in the WeWork in Hong Kong on weekends, uh, as well as occasionally jumping the gun on a news story and interpreting it not quite accurately or otherwise, um, you know, just being a little bit fast to publish. And this is probably a result of the fact that I am not a journalist, nor do I have any journalistic background. So there's a bit of a learning curve. But um, certainly that is one of the challenges is, you know, reporting the news, as it were, when reporting the news is not in your educational or professional background. John, anything from you? Yeah, I think that um, producing content has been extremely fun. There's a lot of stuff happening, as you mentioned, Blaine, in the Chinese space sector, and uh, you really need the patience and the time to really gather and monitor all of that information. I think Dongfeng Hauer was a was a great excuse for us to do that. I echoing a little bit your point here on the. Um, learning curve. I think there was also a technical learning curve because um, for many areas in content creation, we started from scratch. So, you know, learning how to record correctly with a camera, um, using a real microphone, using the right software to record to avoid any interruptions, you know, understanding lighting, getting post-processing right, and, um, you know, learning about web hosting to have a website, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of things were quite new for us. And if you look at some of our early videos, um, well, they definitely look a little bit more amateurish uh, compared to what we have now. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank our listeners and followers because a lot of you have been extremely helpful in leaving comments and suggestions in the comment section on how to improve the Dongfang Hour. And we've actually implemented quite a few suggestions that were put in the comments.
So yeah, as a Westerner, it is certainly both easy and hard to cover the Chinese space sector. And uh, most importantly, it is never boring. Um, so looking at challenges, I think one of the elements that we have seen over the last 18 months is this idea that it is never boring. And there's always a lot of things going on in the Chinese space sector. It seems like every week there are at least one and oftentimes multiple major news stories. And this is uh, quite a lot to... Um, to be covering. And I think at the end of the day, keeping track of such a diverse variety of stakeholders doing so many different things, it can basically feel like a full time job. And uh, this is a little bit tricky, given that both of us are doing Dongfang hour part time. Getting back to the second part of the question, as a Westerner, um, talking about the Chinese space sector can be a delicate matter. Um, from my perspective, I try to keep it neutral, being cognizant of the fact that being overly positive or otherwise overly negative will likely earn me some hate mail from somebody on some side of that argument. And I do find it also noteworthy that, um, you know, back pre-COVID when I was able to go to China, and even now when speaking with Chinese people remotely, um, you know, very, very few people in the Chinese space sector even really mention or, or seem to um, to highlight the fact that, that I'm a Westerner. It, it feels like um, the fact that our reporting is fairly balanced and we don't really have any ideological slant, it, it allows, um, I guess, a certain level of, of um, credibility to be built among among the Chinese space sector, not, not wanting to speak on their behalf. But um, yes, yeah, so certainly it, it's a challenge to um, to be reporting the Chinese space sector as a Westerner, but I think that we, we keep it balanced. On my side, I'd say that it's uh, reporting on Chinese space has been easy and hard. So I say easy because, um, well, it's, you know, Chinese space is still a niche that's seldom discussed in the English language news and just space news in general. So that really helped us carve out a space for us. Um, I think had we been covering, for example, specifically the U.S. space sector, it would have been a really a different story entirely. I think there are also some great uh, English language sources to point out here. I think that... Um, you know, Jacqueline Mir and Chen Lan of Go Taikonauts, they report a lot about Chinese space and they do great work. There's also Andrew Jones from Space News that is also extremely active. But I also think that from from the perspective of people that are trying to report um, Chinese space news like like we are doing, we need to go as much as possible directly to the Chinese sources because the information can you know, change as they go from one English speaker to another. And so that's what we try to do as much as possible, go directly to the Chinese news. I think another difficulty, and you sort of hinted at it, Blaine, is the U.S.-China uh, geopolitical tensions that we currently have. And this tends to polarize a lot of the discussion sometimes in the comments, depending on the topic of the video. And generally, comments, I think, are a really enjoyable experience. It's a lot of, you know, helpful discussion of people pointing out where, you know, maybe we got uh, some area of the of the news coverage wrong. And what we do is we tend to generally pin that comment so it can benefit all our viewers. You also have really helpful suggestions on the Dongfang Ara channel, as, as mentioned earlier. But sometimes we get also some needless anti-US and anti-China um, comments. And so that that more generally is, is more, more uh, unfortunate. And just a last point on the topic of comments. We do sometimes get exceptionally cool stories of the very early days of Chinese synthetic aperture mm. radar technology from uh, people who were there. So that's also been pretty freaking cool. Yeah, it's amazing that you have like professors that, you know, worked in the Chinese space sector in the 80s that are, you know, going over the Great Firewall and watching our YouTube channel. That is... Uh, that's something. On our ambitions beyond our weekly news episodes and the interviews that we do with Chinese space people, we are planning to expand a little bit the scope of our content on the YouTube channel. And we've started to do some deep dives where we discuss in depth this very specific topic on the Chinese space sector. You maybe you've noticed a few of such episodes on the channel recently. We are also investing additional time in improving the content. We are releasing, for example, a brand new version of the website in the coming days or weeks. And I'll just give you a sneak peek here in the video of what that would look like. Um, we're also taking video post processing much more seriously, which is something you may have noticed over the past three to four months now. I think a wild ambition for us in the future would be to be able to monetize the channel sufficiently to take that money and reinvest it into outsourcing some of the things that we do currently and that take really a lot of time, such as video post processing. And as Blaine mentioned earlier in the video, we both do this as a sort of a side side thing. And sometimes it's, it's been a challenge to really fit all of that, you know, monitoring of the news and writing the newsletter and publishing the videos, all of that into our weekly schedule. But, you know, we we try to do our best. 
I think another wild ambition would be able to do a, you know, a, a live coverage, a live stream of a Chinese launch. And I think what would be even crazier, although that we, for that we would need travel restrictions to be raised, would be to do that directly from China, you know, say from the vicinity of a launch uh, launch center like uh, like the Wenchang Launch Center in the southern province of Hainan. And if I recall, we may still have that open invitation from Land Space to come to one of their launches, although to your point, there would need to be a lifting of travel restrictions. But be on the lookout for that. Um, and so from my side, when looking forward to the future and what are we looking at for, for the Dongfang Hour? So I think in general, uh, at the moment, I, I like to think, and this is admittedly a little bit self-serving, that we are in the early stages of a sustained growth in the space sector more uh, globally, and I guess more specifically in China. And it seems like, you know, these months or even a couple of years, uh, we are continuing to see more and more people get interested in the space sector. So I've worked in the sector now for, I suppose, about 10 years. And for the first six or seven years of that time, no one ever from any of my personal contacts or, you know, my, my classmates, no one really asked me about my job or about space. And in the last few years, I have a lot of friends that have nothing to do with the space sector coming up to me and asking about, uh, you know, Starlink or about ASTS, Space Mobile, the, these different companies that are becoming um, quite a lot more publicly known, I suppose. So again, I think that in terms of the the audience, it's it's a growing audience. And so we're very happy to, um, to be, you know, in such a situation moving forward. Um, I think looking more specifically at Dongfang Hour and sort of what, what the plan is for, for the future, it's a very exciting spot to be in. And I think, again, more people are becoming interested in, in China and in the Chinese space sector. And I think for Dongfang Hour, we have the opportunity to start telling a wider variety of stories in a way that's a little bit more multidisciplinary. So rather than simply reporting the news, which is excellent, I very much like doing it, and we hope that, uh, that we can be providing interesting and informative content, I think there are a lot of other uh, sort of deep dive stories or otherwise just stories that are maybe not uh, particularly relevant for this one week of news, but rather that are just more generally interesting or relevant about the Chinese space sector. And so to Jean's earlier point, um, we are going to have an increasing number of sort of mini deep dive episodes, uh, including a Beijing space cluster episode upcoming in the next uh, week or so that will highlight, uh, you know, the, the variety of different space companies around Beijing and their history and a little bit of some personal anecdotes from, from my side as well. So again, trying to tell these stories in a way that is not just reporting the news, but rather that is telling the whole story in a way that is interesting and informative and entertaining, ideally. Um, so yeah, exciting times. So for this question, focusing on YouTube, I'm a big fan of uh, Scott Manley and his technical yet very straightforward, very clear way of explaining, you know, all the space tech that we have behind big space projects. I also enjoy some other space channels such as Everyday Astronaut, Curious Droid, which are really great. And there's another one really special mention to a French language one called Technique Spatiale, which is fantastic it's fabulously researched and um i guess if you're not a french speaker you can still watch it because i probably there are english subs but definitely i, I highly recommend all of those channels for any you know space enthusiast out there i'll have to check it out i don't watch youtube so so often and so my recommendations are going to be primarily print and, <laughs> and podcasts um but from my side definitely a big fan of the space intel report uh, although it is paywalled um the, some other good space industry news sources some of which are quite relevant to china space include the aforementioned go taikonauts and our good friends jacqueline and chen lan as well as spacewatch.global and then talk satellite also another good kind of space and satellite related news source and looking at more China-specific stuff, because I tend to be a bit more of a China generalist, I'm a big fan of the news website Sixth Tone, as well as the China Tech Investor podcast, China Talk podcast, the China History podcast, and the Harvard Fairbank Center for China Studies podcast, among others. So definitely, if you're into kind of more general China stuff, always very happy to discuss that and uh, check out those podcasts if they sound interesting. And so with that, we have one last question, and that is for you, the audience. What do you like about the Dongfang Hour? What do you wish that we did better? And what would you like to see on the Dongfang Hour in the future? Feel free to share your thoughts with us either in the comment section below or otherwise through email at contact at dongfanghour.com. I hope you really enjoyed this um, non-space related episode. We've just achieved 50 episodes, as mentioned previously, which is definitely a milestone for us, and we hope to achieve 
50 more in the coming year or so and a half. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.